not finished with sock pull-up yet. Stay off of me. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Tom, and <laughs> this is the simulcast up and running now for the 29th of September, 1995. Henry Winkler is on this program tonight, and David and Danny Mantle, the sons of the great Mickey Mantle, and a look back at the remarkable career and life of this hero of American sport. Speaking of baseball, the California Angels are playing tonight, and if they don't win, they are eliminated from the American League West pennant race. You know, we talked about this little curse going here with the Angels and TS. The ironic thing of, uh, uh, of this day is that if the Angels are, in fact, eliminated from the pennant race tonight, it happens to be Gene Autry's 88th birthday. So, you know, God, could they just win tonight and extend this for at least one more day and, and give this team and this guy a chance? Today we celebrated the 39th birthday of a great American, that would be Mark Kennedy, the, <laughs> the stage manager and car salesman for the uh, Late Late Show staff. In fact, you don't know this, but I had a letter today on Prodigy from a fellow up in uh, Seattle, Washington named Greg. He said, who is this guy that's always laughing with you when something funny happens on the show? And Greg, you should know that in addition to all the other people who are on staff here who enjoy some moments with me, uh, Kennedy enjoys a laugh more than most, and he says, why don't you let us see what he looks like? Greg, why should we ruin your night? <laughs> it's not pretty. And, no, it's not, today it's not a pretty picture. No, not after the lady and the cake. <laughs> Speaking of prodigy, notice how this all goes together. We start with Mickey Mantle, we go to Gene Autry. The, we, blends. the blends, right, the Prince of Blend. And, and then we went from that to your birthday and, and, and the fact that the guy on Prodigy asked about you. Somebody sent in a note here saying, does it mean you're finished at CBS now that they've canceled your page on the Prodigy, Prodigy World Wide Web? No. You know you're finished here when your picture goes up on that revolving sign across the street. <laughs> <laughs> they've got, you know, they've got three shows on the sign across from TV City, and all three are in desperate trouble. <laughs> so please, Prodigy's fine. If you're looking for us on the Prodigy World Wide Web, they have a new address. Prodigy redid their entire service, and it's coming on the screen now. I don't know what all these letters and, 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 and slashes and punctuation marks mean, but if you push go to on your computer or, or search for uh, that message there, you will come up on the, uh, on the worldwide page, uh, page, and you can send us your own version of uh, Prodigy Mail. Thank you for calling that to our attention. Uh, the other night here, I jokingly said that possibly William F. Buckley had enjoyed a color teeny or two and was not able to be here. In fact, uh, he, there was a mix-up in scheduling. He sent in a very, very nice letter, which is too long to read, but then isn't that William F. Buckley? And I sent him back a very short note uh, saying, uh, you know, I apologize for the mix-up, which was our fault, and we hope to reschedule Mr. Buckley to talk about his book as soon as possible. And then again today, the staff and I had a wonderful time this afternoon. We went out back in the lot, you know, where the water tower is, you know, and we, you know, we once again viewed the water tower from a distance, from a distance. There it is in the distance. And then we walked up very close and took photographs of the water tower, noting very carefully whose name is on said tower. <laughs> Just push it. You know, I don't throw donuts, but I get a charge out of the water tower. Henry Winkler is here tonight from the good old days. Brand new CBS movie of the week, and David and Danny Mantle, a look back at the career of their dad, the Mick, fire up the color teenies, settle back and watch the pictures as they fly through the air. Thanks for being with us, everybody. to rent. It's Pulp Fiction. Seven Academy Award nominations. Winner, best screenplay. Siskel and Ebert call it a wild ride. Is that a fact? John Travolta, Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, Uma Thurman. Pulp Fiction. Rent it today. The little guy here with TGI Friday's three new Cajun dishes. Like these brand new Cajun chicken fingers. And you know how we make Cajun chicken fingers, don't you? Cajun chickens. <laughs> Try one of Friday's new Cajun dishes and get a free Oreo Madness for dessert. To create the perfect home office, you need a printer, a scanner, a fax modem, a plain paper fax, a copier, and a telephone. Or the new multi-pass document processing system from Canon. It's the six most important pieces of office equipment next to your PC, plus software to run it. With a few clicks of your mouse, you can fax and print and scan and phone. It even makes copies. Multi-pass is everything you need next to your PC. Everything. Yeah, they're 
invented in 1873, as some of you vampires out there may remember. the good guys it's the event you've been waiting for our huge after inventory sale starting noon thursday through sunday you'll save big on everything from cellular phones to home audio speakers to color tvs all at the good guys check out the zenith 20 inch tv with remote just 189 a pair of pioneer two-way speakers for only 29 dollars each and you can't pass up this free motorola cellular phone with bonus starter kit and with our famous low price guarantee you'll never have to shop anywhere else only at the good guys where better doesn't cost more Metric's dead. I just saw him today. You did? And you never had a sexual relationship with him. I said I had no social contact. I do consider sex to be a social contact. As you know, I'm married. Mrs. Gavin, is that you on the tape? How could you let them do this to you? They didn't do anything to me. I was in control and I liked it. I never saw that side of you before. She's got no alibi and we got a prince and a hatchet. I cheated on my husband. I didn't know I could be arrested for it. You're gonna charge her, you charge her right now! It was all right in front of me. I just didn't want to see it. We need your help, David, I'm afraid. I know too much. Jade, who am I speaking with? Rated R. Starts Friday, October 13th everywhere. Henry Winkler is an American pop culture icon as the Fonz in the hit show Happy Days. His latest television movie is entitled A Child is Missing. It airs on Sunday night on this network at 9 p.m. I have not seen you since my radio show at ABC. Thanks for coming over and welcome to our little program here at CBS. Thank you very much. You know, we had Gary Marshall in here the other night yeah. telling stories about his life. Is he as much fun to work with as he is just yes, to converse with? Absolutely. Uh, Gary Marshall, you know, when uh, I read the book that he, uh, he's just written, and he writes it in the way that he lives. You know, that th what you read is what he is. He's a fabulous, fabulous man. And recently we talked with Ron Howard here when Apollo 13 was coming out. We talked about what happened after he stopped being Opie. Mm -hmm. And how he went into kind of a little, not a tailspin, but you know, you kind of slow down after you leave a role sure. that that's, po is, and you know where I'm going here. And he told a, a wonderful story about he actually thought at one time of making a porno movie called Opie Gets Laid and, you, you know, to, 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 to make some money. And not that you have done anything like this, but after the Fonz ceased to exist, what did, uh, what, what did Harry Winkler do? Well, I, I did make a movie about uh, the Fonz does France, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four. <laughs> no, but... Um... What did I do? I, I went on to produce. We did uh, MacGyver. We did a movie called The Sure Thing, uh, Rob Reiner's first film. Uh, we did... Um, that was the picture where the guy hitchhikes across the country with yes. another girl to California. John Cusack's yeah, first film. Yeah, wonderful picture. Wonderful yeah, picture. Thanks. Anyway, go, go ahead. Um, the, the company did that. And then, uh, you know, I, I acted in uh, TV movies and stuff like that. So we went on to produce some stuff and have a good time. Um, you were, how surprised were you when, I, I believe Terry Anderson said this to you when you were on The Tonight Show, remember? When no, 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 I was at the inaugural for Clinton, and we were standing there in the middle of 800,000 people, and I, ever, I was taking pictures with everybody from all over the world, right. and uh, this gentleman came up and, and uh, tapped me on the back and said, can I have your autograph? And I turned around and said, you know, I can't sign an autograph except for you. <laughs> And it turned out to be Terry Anderson, and he said to me that uh, when we were um, locked Beirut. up in Beirut, uh, we would watch through the bars uh, when the guards were watching, and uh, you kept us laughing. And there's no way when you're making that show that you could ever imagine that scenario no. playing out. You can't, no, you, you don't know what, you know, remember, you're in a sound stage, no windows, no doors, right. and you don't really know the kind of effect you're having, especially in the beginning. Let me ask you about your early days in, in New York. Yes. Uh, your mom and dad uh, came here from Germany. They escaped, yes, they na did. They escaped Nazism uh, yes, they during did. the time of the Second World War. Right. And your dad was, uh, if I read your bio correctly, a lumber executive. Yes, that's right. He brought a, a business over here from Germany. Uh, it was a, a, an international lumber company. He bought and sold 
uh, hardwoods and softwoods uh, um, and, and ship them all over the place. And as you grow up in New York, you're growing up in America. Yes. And obviously you plug into the pop culture. I, I'm guessing it's the late 50s, early 60s. That's right. right along. So you're going into rock and roll and the Beatles. And all. Sure. And I, I, I picture you, the son in the new world, and the father with the values of the old world. Yes. And I wonder if there's a clash there between fathers. Uh, there is a clash. They are very strict. Um, they are um, oppressive. Uh, they mean well. Of course. Um, but they don't quite get that <laughs> there's another way to think, you know. Uh, they didn't want me to, uh, to be uh, in the business. Uh, my, my father would say to me, why do you think I brought this business over here from Germany? <laughs> and, I, <laughs> Man. and I said... Dad said it enough times because you got it. He said that, yes, Jeez. he did. I said, you mean, besides being, being chased by the Nazis, Dad, was there a bigger reason than that, you know? Uh, and so what he, did he say when you said that to him with that tone? <laughs> Yeah, so we'll talk about this later. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, who do you think you're speaking to? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, you had to stand up when he came in the room. Really? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. And it was hard to find him because he's so short. But the thing... <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, it was great. My mother rode a white horse around the apartment in uh, a Prussian uniform. <laughs> it, was, it was a real gentle way to grow you, up. You, you are not serious. Uh, about riding a horse around the apartment? Yeah, you're not serious. No, but my mother did wear the uniform. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and Dad liked it. <laughs> oh, I tell you, some things, they would go in the room, you'd hear chains. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you said to him, I'm going to be an actor. Yeah, he and said, you, you can throw up on those people. You, you can't tell the difference between the boys and the girls. And so, and, and, and so you had to convince him? Or, or, well, I didn't or, convince him. Or, or I you just, just did it without his blessing? Well, I did it without his blessing. And I just knew that I needed to do it, and I needed to, I, and I didn't know why I needed to. I just, it was who I was. And as soon as I got on TV, they became the co-producers of Henry Winkler. <laughs> Hello, I'm the co-producer of Henry Winkler. So, so the, the story then has a happy ending that mother and father with great pride see their son achieve success as an actor in yes. one of the highest rated television programs of all time. Yes, that is true. Yeah. And I have met people all over the world who said, hey, I met your mom, I have her autograph. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know? I love that story. Yeah. It has a happy ending and I'm sure that your job at the lumber mill is being saved for you just in case. Well, I was, I was during my, uh, my uh, sophomore year in college and uh, before I started my junior year, I was sent to Germany to work on a lumber mill to learn the business from the bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> Why do all fathers want their kids to learn the business from the bottom up? I Why can't know. they just start us? Uh, not that mine had a business to give. Now, in your school years, yeah. you had a tough time. I, I'm you, dyslexic. You, you're dyslexic? Yes. You know, and I tell the story that uh, we read, uh, like, uh, one of the novels was The Octopus by Frank Norris about the Grange Wars, you know. Um, that one got by me. It did? Yeah. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was <laughs> mandatory reading in Mr. Wexler's class in, in, uh, in my school, McBurney School for Boys, Blue Blazer, Grace Lax. Mm -hmm. And all of my classmates would write in the margin. They would write all of the metaphors and the, you know, between the lines yeah, yeah. and the hidden meaning behind the symbolism. I didn't know what they were writing. I didn't know what to write. So I took little droplets of water and I dropped them on each page so they would crinkle up so it looked like I was using my book. Gotcha. <laughs> That's ours, the way I spent my high school career. Yeah, ours was the first one they did for us was Thornton Wilder's The Bridge at San Luis oh, Rey. Sure. And we read this book, and, and Father Padberg was the teacher, and he kept saying, you know, that uh, we should look for the meaning as to why all these people happened to be on that bridge that day. And to this day, I have no idea no. why they were at that. No, they, they, I think the book is about that the good die young, or, you know, the, <laughs> I, but I'm not sure. We are with Henry Winkler. Uh, a child is missing is the picture. We will get to the picture, believe me. See, I can't wait. I, I, I know. <laughs> yes, I personally can. am very excited. Yeah. We will be back with Henry and you on the toll-free after these messages. Adding a printer, CD-ROM drive, or whatever to your personal computer used to be a matter of trial and error. 
Starting with Windows 95, it's a matter of plug and play. Start expanding. Start Windows 95. I don't think any guy is dressing the way his father used to dress. Everybody's dressing more comfortably, including me. Joe Hager III, CEO Hager Clothing. Clothes are more fun to wear today, but the more you wear them, the more you have to wash them. So we need a detergent that's going to make our cottons look their best. Tide goes beyond tough stain removal. With repeated washings, regular detergents can make cotton look old, but Tide can help keep it looking like new. It makes our clothes as carefree as our lifestyle. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tide. End the discussion. It's Miami Vice Chuck Norris time. He's got to kick a little. When he goes undercover to help a cop in trouble. If she's alive, we'll find her. An old you walker. Saturday. Her young son is kidnapped and buried alive. Help! And the number one suspect. I am telling you, he's the one. May be the only one who can save him. I know where your son is. Henry Winkler. Mommy! Roma Downey. I know you're out here! Who can she trust when a child is missing Sunday? In every two-car family, there's his car and her car. His car is fun, and her car is sensible. Can you believe that was five years ago? Now, I think everybody needs a new look once in a while, even the Explorer. And now it has two airbags, four-wheel ABS, and a new suspension. The only thing Ford still hasn't solved is who gets to drive it. Catch AirTouch Cellular's big weekend wipeout sale. When you sign up on AirTouch service, the AirTouch weekend wipeout package is only $19. That includes 1,500 free weekend minutes, plus free sign-up, and this cool cellular phone, all for only $19. The weekend wipeout sale ends Sunday. You snooze, you lose. Call 1-800-AIRTOUCH. Ain't no little rainstorm gonna stop me from getting a black Angus. This month, you and a friend can save over 11 bucks. You get two half-pound prime rib dinners. Share their wagon wheel appetizer sampler. Then split a big old mountain chocolate fudge cake. The whole shooting match for two, just 26 smackers. That's more than 11 bucks off the regular price. And if you get a Visa card, bring it. Back with Henry Winkler, and joining us on the toll-free is Hillary in Stamford, Connecticut. Hello. Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm fine, thanks, and I hope you are. Oh, I am. Um, I just had a quick question. Okay. My question was, is, Mr. Winkler, you were my first love. I was so enamored of you. Um, during my grade school years, I had a lunchbox, I had your poster <laughs> on my wall. <laughs> Any boy that I was halfway interested in had to be, you know, I, I it's just... Be you. I mean, that was Be it. Be Fonzie lookalikes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I was wild about him. <laughs> but you. the question was, was after the show ended, and I realized you worked and everything, you continued, uh, continued to work, did, was there a depression or something? I mean, there wasn't... The you mean in the country, did the stock market crash? Oh, um, no, no. I mean, okay. th was there... Uh, I mean, you must have thought, oh, my God, you know, my, my picture's not on the posters anymore. And no, no, no. Boxes. You know, the, the, the experience was so gigantic and, and so large that what happened, the desire to act absolutely left me. And I, I had no control over it. I didn't know what. So, no, I was not depressed over that, over not having my picture on, um, on, uh, on anybody's... Uh, on every magazine cover, yeah, on lunchboxes, no, whatever. I had a... Uh, we, we did that for 11 years. Um, I just went on and, and did other things. You know, we, we did uh, Night Shift with uh, oh, Ronnie sure, directing. Sure. Michael Keaton, yeah. You know, Michael Keaton's first film. And, and then I just went on and, and directed and, and produced and, and had a really good time. You know, it's a funny thing, Hillary. Uh, uh, Henry and I were talking during the break about this business. It's a tough business. And uh, it takes, as you said, stamina. And both of us have been up and down the road several times, sure. and you just you just keep going. You just keep doing your very, very best and right. work hard, and if you get a little bit lucky, it's okay. Absolutely. Right, because um, I'm studying acting now. Oh, you really? So, um, I grew up in the Midwest, and now I'm out in, in the area doing what I can. 
And I don't know, it's just, <laughs> I think it, it must be me, I'm narcissistic, so. No, it's not a matter of being narcissistic. It's a matter of, you know, wanting to do something in which you believe, Hillary. And I, you know, I wish oh, you well oh, there. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Thank the you. best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Hillary, I'm glad you called. You have a great weekend, okay? Thank you, you too. Say a prayer for the angels now. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye. Surely. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. So now, early on, before you, uh, I know you want to be an actor, but wasn't there a time also that you wished to become a child psychologist? You become well, interested in, in... that's the pragmatic part of me, that if I did not make it in the, in the theater, because okay. I thought that my whole career would be in New York in the theater, I never knew that I would be able to come out to, to Hollywood and actually right. work. Uh, I was short and I had big... You know. A big so, honker. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I thought... What happened to it? Well, it's still, but it worked. You know what I mean? So Let me see your profile. Hello. Oh, come on. That's nothing. No. Come on. You could you could you couldn't rent shade with that. Come on. Okay. So it's okay? It's perfect. Okay. You you by the way, you're looking good. Thank you you're very much. You're looking very good. So anyway, you thought you'd okay, spend your so life. Okay. So I thought that I would I would spend all of my time in Did you in really the, think you had a big uh, I did. Good. Yeah, I know that I'm short. But um No, you're just not tall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't wear Edwardian suits. True. Joe. Sure. And uh, <laughs> I look like box boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, and then I thought to myself when I was worried, if I didn't, I would have to have something to fall yeah, back right, on. Right. And I relate very well with children. Not my own, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so I thought, yes, I, I, I would like that. And also, it was difficult because of my dyslexia. Um, and uh, it, it just, it was, it was just difficult, you know. So I thought perhaps I, if I could just help other kids negotiate um, To adulthood, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, self-image, too. Self-image is so important. Your self-esteem, not too good? Uh, it was horrendous. It's, um, I think I've got it up to my sternum now. Really? Yeah. Why? Why what? Your self-esteem was so low. Oh. I don't, I don't know. I, it might be my karma. It, uh, it Was it like because of your dyslexia? My parents called me Dumma Hunt. R really? Yeah. Uh, stupid. You're lazy. You're not living up to your potential. Yeah, You're yeah. stupid. Yeah, but then uh, Dummkopf. Dummkopf, yeah. 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 Dumb but then dog. a lot of parents, I mean, my parents said that to me. If I got Bs, they wanted As. If I yes, got Cs, right. they wanted Bs. We right. never lived up to our potential. When to, I got their Bs, potential. they wanted Cs. <laughs> you know, and you didn't let them down, I right? would do anything for C. You know? <laughs> And so did you pursue this academically at all, child psychology? Uh, I did when I was at uh, Emerson College. I took uh, psychology courses, but uh, thank goodness I didn't have to foist myself on anybody. You mentioned your own kids, uh, you, that you get along very well with kids, not your own, and I'll ask you about that in a second. But let me ask you about children in this country. Yes. Uh, you know, kids have it tough in this country. Yes, they, 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 they can't vote. They, they, they don't have any rights. They're and not I think any, because they can't vote, there is a tremendous disrespect shown to the children in this country. Um, you know, you don't need them, so why pay attention to them? Uh, not very long ago, they made uh, ketchup, or they tried to make ketchup part of the vegetable group. This is true. Uh, this is absolutely true uh, for, you know, children's lunches. And now they're trying to cut those, the, the, the uh, lunch program, the breakfast program. So what are we going now, to tomato juice? Well, to nothing. And the children, there are some children, there are five million children in this country that go to bed hungry um, every night. And it, the breakfast programs at school are the only program where, where they, it's the only time the children eat, you know? There's no real care about prenatal care. Daycare. Uh, daycare. It's, um, it's really tragic, especially when we talk about the future, but we do very little to nurture those human beings that will live the future. As you've said in articles, those tiny hands that will hold our future yes. one day. I have to pause for commercials. We're with Henry, Henry Winkler. The picture is called... Henry is okay, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Henry, I, I, no, it's all right. No, no. It's just my tongue got in the way of my eye right teeth and you. I couldn't see the prompter. Henry Winkler is here tonight. The picture is called A Child is Missing. We may never mention it after that crack, but we'll give it a shot after these messages. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thomas created Wendy's spicy chicken filet sandwich. He said, if we're going to make it spicy... Well, it's a start. Let's really make it spicy. Now we're getting closer. So he seasoned a whole chicken breast filet by adding his own special blend of pepper and spices. 
and he kept on seasoning until it was perfect. Bingo. Come and try Wendy's spicy chicken filet sandwich, because when you're hot, you're hot. Take cold. Take taste. Take smooth to the extreme. Blood ice. Brew to go beyond the others. To be an easier drinking ice. Take smooth to the extreme. Blood ice. As long as you are out there, I'll never be number one. In any business, you've got to fight to stay on top. I Maybe mean, it ain't tea, but you got a lot to learn. But for an assassin, the competition can be murder. No more, Ginger. Sylvester Stallone, Antonio Banderas. Wow, you got me. Assassins, directed by Richard Donner. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 6th. Choosing the right lenses can be confusing. At LensCrafters, we have these featherweights lenses. They're made of a thin, lightweight material, but they're also tough. Now watch this. It can even stand up to a direct hit like this. Take a look at that. Didn't break. No lens is shatterproof, yeah. but featherweights lenses are 10 times more shatter resistant than other types of lenses. Only LensCrafters has featherweights, and we can make them in about an hour. People choose lightweight lenses for comfort, but when they're safer, I sleep better. LensCrafters, helping people see better one hour at a time. Suppose you're a doctor or a patient and you're about to join an HMO. Suppose you're not really sure what it means to join an HMO. Suppose you watch 60 Minutes Sunday. They were in it for the sport until something went radically wrong. I can't move. Somebody help me. Hold it. Hold it. Now the horrible truth. They may have put Tony Maxwell in a wheelchair for life. Will cause one doctor to face the worst day of his life. I can help. Uh, I prefer you didn't. I'm scared. God forgive me. A powerful all-new Chicago Hope, Monday. Grocery shopping has gotten way too complicated, like running all over town just to get what you need. Well, depend on Hughes Family Markets to have what you want. There's a delicious bakery, USDA choice beef, and terrific seafood. Hughes has always been famous for their produce. They double manufacturers' coupons. There's free knife sharpening, a senior discount, plus savings, like red seedless grapes, 49 cents a pound. Kellogg's Raisin Bran, two for five dollars. And Cremet Pasta, 59 cents. For the quality you need and the value you want, depend on Hughes. This Wednesday is opening day. You'll come to Santa Anita for the beauty. You'll come to Santa Anita for the thrills. You'll come to Santa Anita for the entertainment. Oh, all right, so you'll come for the Stein. Uh oh, where'd I go? This Wednesday, come to opening day of Oak Tree and get this commemorative Stein honoring Charlie Whittingham absolutely free. Santa Anita Park, you can't lose. My name is Sanchez, and I am the best bullfighter in Spain. Well, not yet. For now, I deliver packages. But soon, the ladies will know the name Sanchez. Hmm? Uh oh Surprisingly, shipping companies like FedEx often hire someone else to handle your packages overseas. Don't take that chance, especially when there's a company that uses its own delivery people in more countries. DHL, RLs. Here is Jennifer calling from Birmingham, Alabama. Hello there. Good evening, Tom. Good, Good evening, evening, Henry. Hi. Hi. Nice to talk to both of you. I'm a Thank huge you. fan. Thank you. Speaking of both of you, of course. Thank you. Uh, actually, I had a question and a couple of comments for Henry. I'm a huge MacGyver fan. I was a huge Happy Days fan. Is there? I heard some rumors in the past about the possibility of some MacGyver movies being done overseas. Well, we did, too. And they were already on uh, ABC, and I don't know if there's any um, uh, talk about doing any more than that. But Richard Dean uh, took them, and he, he made them in, uh, in London, in England. Wow, interesting. Like I said, I've been a huge fan of yours for absolutely years, but I wanted to let you know, every show you seem to have done has just spanned the generation where both my mother, my dad, my aunt, we all just love it. We love watching your shows. And you know, what a great segue. I think that your entire family will love... <laughs> the movie that's on the VCR. That, that's on this Sunday night on CBS. On CBS. You yes. know, I was just about to mention that movie, as a matter of fact. A what, Child is Missing. A Child is Missing. And does, does the title pretty much tell us the, the plot line of well, the picture? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, 
I, you might I, want to make notes on this, Jennifer, so that you can follow along as you watch the picture on Sunday night. No, but it's our set. I'm taping everything right now. Okay, that's good. That's Sunday that's night that's See, spirit. you're the greatest. Now, what happened was that I have a family. I lose my family in a fire. I become a recluse. I become so guilt-ridden that I couldn't save them that I become a hermit. I live with my dog in the woods. Seven years later, I find a child who's been kidnapped and buried in the snow, and I'm able to save his life, whereas I was not able to save my own child's life. Mm -hmm. So there is the dichotomy of the peace. While you're living this hermit-like existence in the woods with your dog, do the townspeople know you're there, and do they think you're some kind of a crazed person? They do. They think I'm a crazed person. Notice how I picked up fact, on that, you see? You know, uh, Tom, you are so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yes, they, they think that I, of course, become the suspect, and ah, right. uh, I now have to convince the mother that I not only am taking care of her child, but all I want to do is to give her back her child. And like when you were living in the woods as a hermit with your dog, would you go to town from time to time to get food, and would people look at well, you no, strangely? Well, no, I lived off the land, oh, and you did. I, I, um, the, the child is the, the one who unlocks me and brings me back. Gotcha. But I'm, uh, I haven't communicated with anybody except for the dog, Yeah. which I did off-screen, too, because we were on Mount Seymour. It was so cold. How cold was it? I, it was so cold that I looked at this dog, and I said, we're not going to do this more than once. I need you to <laughs> stay right with me. <laughs> And, and uh, I had such a great relationship with this dog that I, I used the dog as a shawl. I, <laughs> I would wrap the dog around my neck yes. and uh, kept very nicely warm. Uh -huh. Very yeah. good. Jennifer, is there anything else we can help you with tonight? I actually just like to say, of course, again, I love you both, Tom. It's great to have you back. I used to listen to you when I board opt at a station in college. And I used to would put my listeners on hold, wouldn't care what they were doing. I'd call you up if I thought you had a great topic. All right. Thanks for calling, Jennifer. Have a Thank nice you. weekend, okay? Bye-bye. You mentioned that you get along with kids very well, except yeah. your own. How do you not get along with them? Oh, no. I was just joking. I, I have three incredibly great kids. Um, my, my son, my youngest son is 12. My uh, daughter, uh, tomorrow, it's her birthday. She will be anywhere from 15 to 19. I can't <laughs> quite I figure can out what you are, depending on what color well, her hair is that day. No, no, no. It's who she talks to on the phone. And uh, my eldest, um, my stepson is 24 and uh, now works for a, a production uh, management uh, company here in town. Do your 12 and 15 to 19 year olds ask you about what's happening on the O.J. Simpson trial? Do they see it on television? Uh, they watch. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, communication is so fast and so furious that children are they are not more emotionally sophisticated because I don't think a child ever grows emotionally before they're ready but intellectually they're very sophisticated especially here in in uh, in hollywood and do they ask you about this as they watch it i think they try not to deal with it you know i think that what happens is that there is so much tension uh it is so difficult to live uh with uh, as a young person with that tension that uh they try not to uh, to deal with it actually and, and the only other thing I, I want to catch up on, remember on radio we talked about sightings, which was a project yet to come on Fox, and That's now right. it's, it's, now been it's four, years, four old. years old. And we you just... You have CD-ROM, uh, you have uh, web pages, you have uh, books. A book through uh, Simon & Schuster, three home videos coming out in, uh, in February, and a home, uh, you know, a movie that we sold to NBC. And sightings, again, is, is a giveaway. It's people who have sighted... Well, not just. It is the study of all things paranormal. Right. So we go all over the world. I mean, we have been uh, in uh, Ireland, we have been in England, in Scotland, in Chile, uh, Mexico, uh, Nova Scotia, Israel. It, it's just amazing. Uh, and people all over the world are having the very same experiences. We're, we're doing a, an interview. They're, they're flying to Sri Lanka to do an interview with Arthur C. Clarke, my idol. Oh, the, the, yes. At this moment, yeah. we're doing a, uh, an interview with... The man uh, who made satellite TV communication absolutely. possible. Absolutely. And uh, quickly, what is the common thread that runs through these stories that you've told from all the people that you've been to in different parts of the world? You, you say people are experiencing I would this. say the, the common thread is that there is another dimension we live with on this earth that is not so clear um, at first blush. And if you look just below the surface, uh, there is a very powerful energy going on, which also happens in... Um, a, child a child is, is missing, child is missing on, uh, on, CBS on CBS on Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's powerful. Where you have a holy experience with a dog in the woods seven miles out of town. Yes, I do. 
You know what's, what would have been an interesting plot twist? I've actually married a dog. Is, is <laughs> <laughs> an interesting plot twist would have been if a, uh, if a demented widow left food for you on her back porch and you came in and picked up the food. That's the sequel. Ah, uh, there you go. We'll put that on the bill. We'll, we'll put that on the billboard across the street. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed seeing you again. Thank, Thank you, Henry. You. It's a pleasure. A pleasure is all ours. Have a great weekend and best to your family. The picture is called A Child is Missing, Sunday at 9 p.m., 8 central, on the CBS television network. Please. My, my family will really have a great weekend if everybody watches on Sunday night on CBS. <laughs> no pressure. By the way, Everybody in this building will have a better weekend if everybody watches not only your show, but there's a couple others on Sunday we'd kind of like them to watch, too, like Sybil would be one, 60 Minutes would be another, and, you know, Thursday's a great night for Murder, She Wrote. We don't think that's a bad night at all. In fact, we said so in the paper just the other day. I love the guy who said, when we, when we moved it, we expected it to be number two. <laughs> oh, man, that <laughs> is truly <laughs> using your ass. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We must get on to David and Danny Mantle here and uh, continue the Mark Kennedy birthday fiesta right after these messages. <laughs>